Hey everybody, uh, welcome to this confirmation requirements overview video. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Joe Schultz. I'm one of the youth ministers here at St. Therese. And in this video, I'm gonna walk through the confirmation requirements document that you received over email. And that will be inside your folder. I'm gonna talk over the requirements one by one, just to make sure that uh, you understand what they're for, why we have them and how you can do them. If you have any other questions after this video, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or to Addie D as my colleague. As kind of a, a quick overview or a preface, our main purpose in these requirements, in the way we've set up this program, is to help give you the confirmands sort of a, an example or a structure or template of what it's like to live life as an adult Catholic. Um, you know, after your confirmation year this year, um, you're probably not going to be required to go to classes every week uh, the way you maybe were in elementary and middle school. You're going to have a lot more freedom and independence in how you choose to live your faith. So while you're in this program this year, rather than making you go to, you know, a meeting every week, we want to give you more time to help you explore different ways that adult Catholics live their faith and find out what systems of engagement, what kind of habits or what kind of opportunities really resonate with you. Um, when you are an adult Catholic, when you're free of faith formation and Catholic school and all those things, it'll be up to you to find ways to keep engaging in your faith. And so we want to give you the tools and some tips and some strategies for how you can do that well so that um, you know what to do once you're no longer in school or in faith formation. So that's what's guiding a lot of our requirements this year is to kind of um, give you some structure, give you some advice so that once you are confirmed, once you're out of the program, you know what to do. So I will start with the document now. Um, I have laid out the requirements one by one on this presentation. Um, if you have the document on your computer, over email, a hard copy will be placed in your folder. You can follow along with me. So the first thing to note this year is that um, unlike in previous years, the confirmation ceremony is actually going to be held in January, on January 16th. That is in the middle of our program. So we're going to have some meetings before the program. Sorry, we're going to have some meetings before the confirmation ceremony, and we're going to keep meeting after the ceremony too. That's so that you have a chance with your small group, with your peers, with your small group leaders to kind of reflect on what the ceremony was like, what happened during the ceremony, and to think about, you know, what happens now? How am I different? What will my life look like? We don't want to just leave you in the lurch the second the ceremony happens. So confirmation is now in the middle of the year, but the program still lasts all the way through April. Moving on, the first requirement is our prerequisite that uh, we ask everybody who enters confirmation to the year before have done either a year of faith formation or attendance at a Catholic school we can work around this and make exceptions and help people catch up. We've done our best to talk to people, reach out to people about this, but if you yourself have concerns, feel free to reach out to us. Um, the most important thing that we require is regular weekend mass attendance. This is absolutely crucial both to confirmation and to life as a Christian. This is because mass is where we encounter Jesus himself, where he comes to us in the Eucharist and we receive him into our bodies and our souls. Um, you know, the whole confirmation life, the whole Christian life is about getting to know Jesus better, being in relationship with Jesus. And the most important step to growing in a relationship is spending time with the person that you want to be in a relationship with. So Mass really truly is the center of the Christian life. And it's fundamental, it's absolutely crucial that you make Sunday Mass attendance a priority. Moving on, um, we will have monthly confirmation sessions. So uh, about once a month, they will always be on Sunday afternoons after the 10 a.m. mass. You can see the dates on there. At these sessions, we will cover some of the, the big fundamental topics about what it means to be Catholic, what the confirmation sacrament is all about, how you'll live your life. These are kind of like the big meat and potatoes of getting you ready for the sacrament. So it's very important that you make those. In these meetings is when you'll check in with your small group leaders, you'll have discussions with the people in your small group, you'll pray together, and uh, you'll hear from me or Addie on these sort of big topics. Um, the what, Most of these will run until 1 p.m. The one exception is our retreat. That'll be here at St. Therese on Sunday, January 9th, which is the Sunday right before confirmation. So this is, again, a very uh, important date to have on your calendar. In addition to those confirmation sessions, we're also holding um, a speaker series. These will run on Sunday evenings. They're gonna be about seven of them. And 
um, these speaker series where we have outside speakers come and talk on um, topics that are kind of relevant to Christian life, Christian thought, Christian morality, that sort of thing. They're not, these are more kind of like side topics or, or fun topics or hot topics or things more relevant to your life. So these speaker series are, um, so whereas the confirmation sessions are more like the, the absolute fundamentals, these are kind of almost like extracurricular things to learn more about different avenues of our faith and how you can live your life. So uh, we require you to come to five out of seven of these. So you'll have some freedom in choosing which ones sound interesting, which ones work for you. Um, importantly is that in October on uh, the 16th of October, we're having Archdiocesan Youth Day, where we're gonna go to a big church in the, where we're gonna go to another church. We'll have a huge event with a bunch of, you know, several hundred teens from around the Twin Cities. We'll have mass together. We'll have um, talks and prayer. We'll get to spend time with the Archbishop. So this is a really incredible experience, and this will count as two of the five required sessions if you join us for uh, AYD on October 16th. So we'll have more details about that, but we really encourage you to go to this because uh, it'll be incredible. Uh, moving on, um, if you were not baptized at St. Therese, please contact the parish you were baptized and have them send us a copy of your baptismal certificate. This is a pretty routine request. Just call them, tell them this is what you need. They'll know what to do. Um, they can send this certificate to the church or directly to me at the Church of St. Therese. Um, this is required if you were not baptized at St. Therese. If you were baptized at St. Therese, you do not have to do anything. I will take care of tracking down your confirmation, sorry, your baptism records. Um, what's important though is that if you were not baptized here, we need a new copy of your certificate, even if you have given us one before. So if, for example, you did First Communion here and you sent us, you had the church send us a certificate then, we still need a new certificate for confirmation. So please contact your church again. That's a little inconvenient, but this is a requirement of the archdiocese that we receive a new copy for every major sacrament. So um, again, if you were not baptized here, please have the certificate sent um, as soon as possible. Let me know if you have any questions or challenges with that. So some of the main things we'll be doing this year that you, the contramans, will be doing um, is building a habit of prayer. The way we're going to do this is, is you'll, one of the hardest things about prayer is just to get started and to keep it going. Prayer is kind of like exercise where, um, you know, you need to do it a lot to get good at it. You need to put in the time with God in order to grow close to him. And that can often involve a routine and, you know, doing it at the same time, doing it no matter what, doing it even when it doesn't feel great, even when you're not really in the mood. Um, that kind of consistency, that regular turning to God is a crucial part of the Christian life, and it's one that eventually is going to pay off. And so we're here to help you kind of build those habits and give you some tips and some structure. So every month when you meet with your small group, you guys are going to create a monthly prayer goal. Um, and that will be something very specific. Like, for example, you might agree to spend five minutes every day reading the Bible or say three rosaries every week or, or whatever. Your groups will come up with your own ideas, but um, every week you'll have, sorry, Every month, you'll have a goal. Um, we have given you these journals. In these prayer journals, you can record your progress on that goal. Um, some people find it helpful to like actually journal to God. So like to write in their, you know, describe in their journals how prayer went, write out their thoughts to God. You don't have to do that. Um, you don't, but we do um, encourage you to at least use this journal to keep track. So even if you just write down, you know, September 31st, five minutes of the Bible. Uh, October 1st, I forgot. October 2nd, uh, five minutes of the rosary. Even those kind of like very like quick and dirty, this is what I did. Having that written down can help you get a sense of how your prayer is going. At the end of every month, when you get back together with your small group, you will reflect on your progress. We have some reflection questions on the front cover, inside cover of your journal. And so before going to small group meetings, look those questions over, write down some answers, just so that when you come to share, you kind of, you know what you're going to say. Um, and then in a small group every month, you, you'll check in on everybody's progress, what went well, what didn't go well, and you'll think of ways to improve next month, to go deeper next month, to restructure next month, whatever works for you. Um, 
you're, we are not going to, we are never going to look at these journals. So these writings will remain private. Um, I'm never going to read it through. You're never going to like tear out pieces and give them to your small group leader. This is just for you. As long as when you come to small group meetings, you're able to share your answers to the check-in questions in your discussion. So I hope that makes sense. And this folder, or sorry, this prayer journal will be in your folder when you get it. By and large, you'll be free to determine what kind of prayer practices you enjoy. So if you like the rosary, do the rosary. If you like reading the Bible, read the Bible. We're not going to specify too strictly what you can or can't do. The one thing that we're going to require is that we're asking everybody in this program to spend a total of 10 hours in adoration over the course of the year. In particular, that's five hours of adoration before confirmation and five hours of adoration after confirmation. The reason why we make this requirement is, again, because adoration is where you go to church. You go to a place where Jesus is present in the form under the appearance of the Eucharist, and you sit with him. You spend time. with him. Um, like we said, this life, this Christian life is all about coming to know God, and it's really important to spend time with God. So that's why we're requiring adoration. Um, one important caveat, though, is that when we say five hours of adoration, we do not encourage you. Um, in fact, we recommend you don't do whole hour periods. So if you're not used to going to adoration, then we really recommend that you don't try to go there for a whole hour at first because it'll be a lot. You'll probably get sick of it. We recommend if you're not used to adoration that you go in smaller chunks. So, you know, 15 minutes here, 20 minutes there that kind of stuff, so that you can kind of get used to it. You can slowly build up. Just again, just sitting down in a church for a whole hour, if you've never done it before, can be a little overwhelming. So take it small, take it slow. In your folders, we have advice on how to go to adoration and tips for what to do. So take a look at that. Build you know small amounts that by the time you go to confirmation, all of your adoration hours should total five hours. But again, it doesn't have to be five one-hour periods. It can be 10 half-hour periods or anything anything like that. Um, so moving on, um, we ask that you engage in one church ministry throughout the year. So instead of doing service hours, um, this is something that we did in the past, and we're no longer doing hours in the sense that you have to have 20 hours and then you're done, because that is not how adults do service in the church. You know, me and Addie, we're both involved in the church, but we don't fill out a time log and give it to Father Andre every year. Instead, we and other adults, you know, we find one ministry or two ministries that we really like, things that we enjoy doing, things that we're passionate about, and we commit to doing those on a regular basis. You know, that's how adults do service in the church. And so we want to encourage you to think of service in that way, not as like, I must meet this goal of hours, then I'm done, but instead... Um, you know, I found something, I found a way of being a part of the church that I really like. So that's why I want you to find one ministry that you enjoy. Um, that can be a service ministry, like going to feed my starving children. Um, it can be something like a Bible study or youth group or helping out at mass, like as a server. These are all ways to engage in the church. So we ask that you pick one ministry and that you engage with it substantially throughout the year. So that doesn't mean you have to go to every single session. It's like, let's say that you pick a Bible study. You know, we're not going to come down on you if you have to miss a Bible study session. But just make it part, commit to it, right? Make it part of your, your weekly, monthly routine. Do it on a regular basis. Um, and in your monthly check-ins with your small group, you'll share your progress. So again, it's not that you have to do a certain amount of hours or you have to go to every single meeting or you're out of the program, but just commit on a regular basis to doing a ministry. We have a list of suggestions in your folder. Those suggestions are not exhaustive. So you can do things not listed on the suggestion sheet. The suggestions are suggestions to get your mind going, but if you have other ideas, other things you like, other things you're passionate about, or even things that you want to start, let us know. Um, from here on out, these are uh, pretty straightforward assignments. You'll choose a sponsor. That should be an adult who's a practicing Catholic who has already been confirmed. Um, in your folder, you'll have a list of the requirements and you'll have a quick little form for them to fill out and send directly to us. Um, you'll choose a confirmation saint and fill out a form on that. We'll talk about the saints more in our sessions. 
Um, and then finally, you will write a letter to Father Andre requesting confirmation, and you will meet and have an interview with him or with one of us. Don't worry about these. We'll talk about them in January. So that is the gist of our program of our requirements. If you have questions about these, again, please feel free to reach out, let us know. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you at the next confirmation session. So have a great week and we'll see you soon.